hi guys welcome back to my channel obs and guy made easy in today's video i'm going to discuss spontaneous abortions spontaneous abortions are preferably known as miscarriages so what is a miscarriage a miscarriage is a loss of pregnancy before the age of viability now remember we say that in developing countries the age of viability is about 28 weeks gestation age whilst in developed countries the age of viability is about 24 weeks gestational age. Miscarriage can also be defined as loss of a fetus weighing less than 500 grams, which is not capable of independent survival. The incidence of miscarriages is about 10 to 20 percent of all the pregnancies, and the cause of miscarriages is quite complex as there could be a number of reasons causing a miscarriage, so it's quite difficult to pinpoint which exactly caused the miscarriage. About 50% of early miscarriages are due to chromosomal abnormalities. Some of the chromosomal abnormalities are trisomies. Trisomy 16 is the most common trisomy. Others are monosomy, triploidy, polyploidy, structural chromosomal translocation or deletion abnormalities. Endocrine causes account for 10 to 15 percent of all the miscarriages, one of them being lutefer's defect. So what is LPD? LPD is when there is insufficient progesterone or there is poor response of the uterus to progesterone. Remember that progesterone is important because it inhibits, it stops contractions of the uterus. It also helps the uterus to grow. Other endocrine disorders are hypothyroidism and hyperthyroidism. This can also cause miscarriages. Diabetes mellitus, if not controlled properly, can also cause miscarriages. Anatomical abnormalities account for about 3 to 38% of all miscarriages, cervical incompetence being one of them. Remember, cervical incompetence is premature cervical dilatation and effacement before a pregnancy reaches them. Cervical incompetence is one of the most common causes of recurrent miscarriages as well as mid-trimester miscarriages. Other anatomical abnormalities include a biconvert or a septed uterus. If you look at this diagram here, this is a septed uterus. There's a septum inside dividing the uterus into two. In a biconvert uterus, it's like the uterus is trying to divide into two parts. So this septum and this division here reduce the intrauterine volume. There's reduced space inside the uterus. So if there's reduced space inside the uterus, there's reduced space for the fetus to grow, which can result into a miscarriage. And in some situations, you can have a fetus implanting into the septum instead of the endometrium so remember that this septum has poor blood supply which is not sufficient to keep up with the developing fetus so this results into a miscarriage another anatomical abnormality is a uterine fibroid uterine fibroids are responsible for causing subfertility as well as miscarriages Submucosal fibroids are especially implicated in causing miscarriages. This is because it grows within the endometrium and myometrium. So it takes up the space. So if a fetus was to come and also implant at the same anatomical site here, it would be fighting with the fibroid for blood supply as well as space. So the winning the winning enemy here is the submucosal fibroid. So the fetus ends up being miscarried. The other thing is that a submucosal fibroid causes endometrial irritability, which can result into uterine contractions. So we don't want contractions when you are pregnant because this can result into a miscarriage. Another anatomical abnormality is intrauterine adhesions. So what could have caused these intrauterine adhesions? Could have been overzealous MVA, manual vacuum aspiration, dilatation and curettage, or chronic infections like pelvic inflammatory diseases. So intrauterine adhesions are simply fibrosis of inside the uterus. 
So what happens is that this fibrosis here, this fibrosis here interferes with fetal implantation as well as placentation as well as fetal growth. Infections account for about 5% of all the pregnancies. Remember that infections can cross the placenta and reach the fetus. They can be viral like rubella, cytomegalovirus, human immunodeficiency virus, parasitic like toxoplasma as well as malaria, bacterial causes like urea plasma and chlamydia and etc. etc. Immunological causes account for 5-10% to 10 of miscarriages, one of them being antiphospholipid syndromes. Some of these antiphospholipid syndromes include lupus anticoagulant and anticardiolipin antibodies. So what these antibodies do is they cause the trophoblast to stop from differentiating and functioning. The same antibodies also activate the complement pathways and also they cause release of local inflammatory mediators like cytokines and interleukins. So this whole pathogenesis results into fetal hypoxia, fetal destruction, which results into a miscarriage. Another immunological factor that can result into a miscarriage is when you have an imbalance between the T helper 1 cells and the T helper 2 cells. The T helper 1 cells are responsible for the production of pro-inflammatory cytokines, whilst the T helper 2 cells are responsible for the production of anti-inflammatory cytokines. So what the T helper 1 cells do is produce the pro-inflammatory cells, which they are which are the attack cells. These are going to attack the fetal cells. Whilst the T helper 2 cells produce the anti-inflammatory cytokines, which are going to protect the fetal cells. So these are a defense mechanism. So if you are going to have a successful pregnancy, this means you have more of the T helper 2 cytokines than the T helper 1 cells. Another thing that can cause miscarriage is when you have autoimmunity by natural killer cells. Natural killer cells can sometimes malfunction and cause auto self-destruction. That includes the fetal cells. Another cause of miscarriage is maternal medical illnesses like cyanotic heart disease. Cyanotic heart diseases can result in too poor oxygenation of the growing fetus. Sickle cell. Sickle cell anemia is where the mother already has a low hemoglobin. So this low blood level is already insufficient to keep up with the developing fetus. Diabetes mellitus. Poorly controlled sugars have been responsible for miscarriages as well as poorly controlled blood pressures like in chronic hypertension, pregnancy-induced hypertension, as well as preeclampsia. Paternal causes of miscarriages include sperm chromosomal abnormalities. So in these cases, you find that if a woman remarries a different man, you find that she will have a normal subsequent pregnancies than when she was married to the man before. Thrombophilic disorders have been identified to also cause miscarriages like factor 5 laden mutation, protein C deficiency, hyperhomocysteinemia as well as antithrombin 3 and prothrombin abnormalities. So the end result of these abnormalities is that there is coagulation and thrombosis of blood vessels. Now remember that these blood vessels carry blood to the fetus to the fetus as well as the placenta. So if there is partial or complete occlusion there's reduced blood supply to the fetus as well as the placenta. Other causes of miscarriage include environmental factors like cigarette smoking, alcohol consumption, exposure to radiation like x-rays, use of drugs like cocaine, heroin, and exposure to lead and arsenic. But 40 to 60 percent of miscarriages are unknown. So in your practice, you're going to meet different types of patients, one of them being a woman who's complaining of recurrent miscarriages. So how do you go about evaluating this case? Evaluation of a miscarriage. First of all, get a detailed history. Is it her first marriage? If not, in her previous marriage, did she have any children? Or her partner, was he married before? Or does he have any children outside the marriage? 
this can actually help you identify who is the problem is it the woman or is it the man previous miscarriages if she's had any previous miscarriages at what gestation age were they was it first trimester or second trimester remember that the first trimester abortion the common causes are genetic factors endocrine disorders and infections as well as immunological disorders whilst in second trimester the common causes are anatomical abnormalities like cervical incompetence the biconuate uterus septate uterus or intrauterine adhesion in, uh, intrauterine fibroids as well as maternal medical illnesses so that's how you go about this case you go on and ask have they had previous manual vacuum aspiration have they had a previous uh, dilatation and curettage remember that overzealous manual vacuum aspiration as well as previous dilatation and curettage can result in intrauterine adhesion have they had a previous corn biopsy remember corn biopsy results in survival incompetence do they have a history of sexually transmitted infection or pelvic inflammatory disease remember chronic pelvic inflammatory diseases can result into intrauterine adhesions do they have any maternal medical illnesses like diabetes mellitus any endocrine disorders any hypertensive diseases or any heart disease how is their lifestyle do they take alcohol do they smoke remember smoking has been associated with infertility the longer you smoke the lesser your chances of getting pregnant do they do other drugs like heroin find out their occupation how many hours are they putting into work is it a stressful job is it a depressive job find out the mother's and father's blood group the maternal and paternal blood group remember recess isoimmunization can result into recurrent miscarriages what investigations will you carry out in a patient who's having a miscarriage or has had a miscarriage the hematological ones include a full blood count and differential count remember you are looking for the hemoglobin level is there any infection a b o and recess compatibility the blood groups of the mother and the father remember recess isoimmunization can result into abortion the random blood sugar and the fasting blood sugar you can also do a blood sugar profile you want to find out did this patient have gestational diabetes mellitus or she actually has diabetes mellitus if you really are not certain with the random blood sugar and the fasting blood sugar results you can do a glycated hemoglobin which shows you how well the sugars have been controlled in the last three months remember we said infections can cause miscarriages so you can do rapid plasma reagent or a venereal disease research laboratory test this test for syphilis a hepatitis surface antigen b test or a full hepatitis profile test an hiv test a rapid diagnostic test for malaria and a malaria parasite slide remember those of us in africa or tropical countries are prone to malaria and malaria crosses the placenta and causes spontaneous miscarriages you can do a viral serology for rubella cytomegalovirus and for the immunological disorders we discussed you can do a lupus anticoagulant antibody test an anticardiolipin antibody test or anti-nuclear antibodies and for the endocrine disorders especially hyperthyroidism or hypothyroidism you can do a t3 a t4 and a thyroid stimulating hormone test do a urine test for microscopic culture and sensitivity as well as a high vaginal swab remember that if untreated urinary tract infection sexually transmitted infection as well as asymptomatic bacteria if these three are not treated they can actually cause miscarriages you can also do a parental karyotype to study for chromosomal abnormalities and for the expelled fetus you can do autopsy and chromosomal studies on it and that comes to the end of our discussion 
in the next videos i'm going to look at the different types of miscarriages so don't forget to subscribe if you want any more updates thank you